So um, my mother killed herself when I was a teenager. And um, I realized, it took me a long time to realize this. You know, I'm 67, I'm still figuring some of this stuff out. Yeah. That probably by the time I was 10, she was already deeply depressed and acting in certain ways that were not life-affirming, let's put it that way, for herself. Um, and she taught those to her children, not on purpose, but just by her struggles, and then finally by her death. And she made some attempts before they were unsuccessful, before she was successful. She taught us something. And I know she'd be aghast to think that she did what she did, but it happened. She taught us that it is possible to think of our lives as worthless at their root. Um, I struggled with that for years. Um, I made an attempt on my own life uh, while I was at university um, with stuff that I know I learned. One of my sisters successfully killed herself 10 years later. So stuff she learned. Um, there is no death that doesn't implicate a whole tree of people that literally ramifies, has branches. Yeah. Um, you know, John Donne famously says no one, it's an island. Um, and that is true, but it is true for the most negative things as for the most positive things. Our responsibilities go everywhere. So there, a big question for Christians and for anybody is what are we teaching one another when we both allow, let alone participate, let alone choose in the um, deliberate ending of our lives? What, what, what are we teaching people? When you think about suffering, Dr. Radner, and I think about your own story, the experience of losing your mom and your sister, the emotional toll that took on you, and you mentioned that even to this day you're working through some of the issues that you inherited and were taught. You have lived a life where you have suffered as a result of other people's choices, and you continue to live that life. And here you are now a voice to those who suffer, saying you can be resilient and move through this. You know, looking at the person of Jesus and the way he suffered on our behalf, can really inspire us to be resilient in the face of our own suffering, physical, mental, emotional. Would you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, and I would, I would say that's absolutely right. And I would say in, even more than inspire, inspire Holy Spirit yeah. way in an intimate, vivifying way. But we, we, we participate in the suffering. Paul talks about that, suffering with Jesus. Not necessarily in the sense of we're not redeeming the world, but we are actually allowing our suffering to be an offering that we make into his infinite treasury, which is his own love poured out for all the world and all of humankind and for us as well. I mean, it's kind of response. And it's a response, I mean, you know, how do we express love for someone? We give what's most important to us to them. Mm. And by Offering, and I, I'll stick to that word as the main word I, was, I would use in terms of what we do with our suffering as Christians. We offer it in Christ. We offer it to God. And I'm not mm -hmm. sugarcoating it at all. Mm -hmm. I hope people realize that. Um, but it, it can be a good gift. Yeah. And it goes so much against the grain of everything we teach people these days.